sexual enjoyment. For a moment it's enjoyable, but then the mind creates a fantasy around it. It uses it as a promise for perfect satisfaction. This mind that never knows what satisfaction is. <laughs> Because what is the source of, of our dis, of dissatisfaction, of lust and desire? Remember, the religions have said it's the body. The body is the source. But is it true? Hmm? It sounds reasonable, yes. Sounds probably the body is to blame. But then when we really begin to listen to the body, to, to, to pay attention to it, we realize that it's the sweetest, most innocent being. It is actually desireless. It has such minimal needs to be happy, to be content, and to be healthy. The body absolutely has no addictions. The body doesn't crave sugar. The body doesn't chase after sexual fantasies. You see? The body has nothing to do with it, and it's just, it is miserably governed by the mind that does all this, that develops addictions and craving and, sh and, 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 and fantasies. And then, the body becomes so drained because there is nothing natural for the body to follow all these silly desires and ambitions. It has its natural rhythms because it is nature. It doesn't need any of that. So this is why our body becomes so exhausted. <laughs> Sometimes we say, oh, I'm so exhausted, and we think that it, it means that our body is exhausted. But really what we say, oh, I have exhausted my body so much. And this is the thing, when we, when we blame the body for being the, the source of desire, the source of lust, it's only because we, we don't understand the nature of, of the mind. Not the body. The mind creates constant images, pictures. It weaves these images, these pictures around a certain, I don't know, for instance, a, a physical sensation. Eating something sweet. And then, and then the body, the, the mind weaves around it some kind of a, of a promise of constant satisfaction. And then it chases after this, this substance. Or sexual enjoyment. For a moment it's enjoyable, but then the mind creates a fantasy around it. It uses it as a promise for perfect satisfaction. This mind that never knows what satisfaction is. <laughs> I always like to tell about uh, the, the realm of the hungry ghosts. Do you know the realm of the hungry ghosts in the, in, uh, in the Tibetan, Tibetan uh, uh, sort of mythology? Uh, there, there is the, when you die, if you haven't been a good boy or girl and, uh, and have completed your, your, your understanding of enlightenment, <laughs> I'm joking, if, uh, but if you haven't completed the, uh, your understanding, then you, you, you find yourself uh, going through certain realms. Okay, it's like a realms of the in-between, between death and rebirth. And then you visit all kinds of hellish realms. And these hellish realms, the, what is so interesting about them is that they are created by your own mind. You see, it's Buddhism, it's not religion. Monotheistic religion. So, no sin here. You you create your own hell, and then you reach one of the realms is the realm of the hungry ghosts. It's bodiless beings, ghosts, 
who, are, who have endless food, a tremendous abundance of, of, of food everywhere, and they can eat as much as they want. The thing is that they don't have stomachs, and they cannot digest anything. They cannot, so whatever they, they put immediately comes out, so they never feel satisfaction. So they eat, and eat, and eat, and, all, and, and that's their hell, you see? That's the mind.